Welcome to DeKalb, Illinois, home of Northern Illinois University. After winning the Heisman and National Championship as a quarterback for the University of Wisconsin, I abruptly retired from my playing career after my freshman year and took over as the head coach at my local high school in DeKalb, Illinois. After winning multiple state championships for them, the college down the road from us came knocking, offering me a job, and I obviously accepted the head coaching job at NIU, where I would be trying to turn them into national champions. The first thing I had to do as head coach was get to know the roster. Our starting quarterback would be redshirt junior Ethan Hampton and he would be joined by one of the top running backs in the country in the backfield senior Ontario Brown. Our number one wideout this year was junior Kenji Lewis with a fellow senior Grayson Barnes at tight end. On defense we had nine returning starters from last season as the Huskies had a top 25 ranked defense in the country last year. Safety Javon Bird was one of our top returning defensive players this season and Christian Furman was the top transfer into our program this offseason. Coach Brooks is going to be running a pro-style offense with a 4-3 multiple defense, and his pipeline state is going to be Wisconsin, where he played his college football at. NIU gave him a three-year contract where they are expecting five wins a season from him, and he would get right to work by upgrading his advanced look QB skill in his recruiting tree. Thankfully, we have an elite recruiter as our offensive coordinator, but we're probably going to end up finding our defensive coordinator to get one that's also an elite recruiter. On the recruiting trail, we really needed to focus on a couple of positions with quarterback and left guard being the big ones on offense and defensive tackle and outside linebacker being the positions on defense. Coach Brooks would fill out his preseason recruiting board and Nick Yeast would be the number one recruit on his board who was slated to be a quarterback. Three-star receiver DeMarco Vernon would be the number two recruit on the board. Three-star tight end Mitch Kuma would be on the board as well as the number three prospect and three-star defensive tackle Stefan Morton would be his fourth ranked recruit in this class. While we had what should be an easy start to the season against FCS Midwest, we had games coming up against ranked Notre Dame and NC State later in the season, so it was not going to be a cakewalk to start the year, but let's get it started with this game against FCS Midwest. We would be receiving the ball first as the kickoff was off, and we were underway as we would feel this at the 12 yard line and it would be brought back to about the 26. And I do want to apologize as this game was recorded in 30 FPS. All future games here will be recorded in 60 FPS and look a bit better. We were off to a good start though as on second and two we would give it off to Gavin Williams and he would break off a decent chunk. And then on second and one Ethan Hampton would find receiver number one Kenji Lewis who would take this inside the 10 yard line. And on third and goal Hampton would find Andrew McElroy for our first touchdown as the senior receiver would score the first touchdown of the season for NIU and now we found ourselves on defense and surprisingly it wouldn't take long for FCS to make it across midfield and then on first and 10 back to throw they would have a wide open touchdown we would be forced to punt our next possession but on defense next drive Deshaun Profet would come away with our first interception and that would allow Ethan Hampton to find the true freshman Kyle Thomas for for a touchdown as we had taken the lead back over FCS Midwest and would get a third down stop as we had a 14 to 7 lead headed into the second. It looked like we were going to have to punt to start the second quarter but Ethan Hampton would scramble on third and 13 to pick up the first down and then on the very next play it would be play action as he would roll to the right and find Kenji Lewis inside FCS territory down to the 24 where we would hand off to Ontario Brown and he would take this into the end zone as we had now extended it to a two position possession lead over FCS Midwest, but showing a kickoff can never be a good thing as they would take this from the five, find a seam, and they had room to run as this would be taken back to the house for a 95 yard touchdown. And just like that, we were back to only being up by a touchdown over FCS. So we needed to score a touchdown on this possession to keep a comfortable lead over them. Unfortunately, we were faced with a third and nine and Ethan Hampton wouldn't be able to complete this pass as we would have to punt the ball away to FCS but would come up with a defensive stop of our own. On fourth and 18, they would have the punter standing on their own goal line as we would take this from about the 46, taking it to the left side, and this would set up an excellent return for a great field position. As we were on the 23 of FCS, Ethan Hampton back to throw, he would find Kyle Thomas in stride, and the junior quarterback would go right back to the true freshman on the shovel pitch for a touchdown. We had finally gotten our two possession lead back over FCS Midwest, but our defense just couldn't seem to get off the field against FCS's offense in the second quarter today. 
We had a chance to stop them here on third and six as they were driving and Javon Bird would knock that down. So they would try to settle here for a 43 yard field goal that would miss and that meant we had another chance to extend this lead even more but Ethan Hampton would throw his first interception of the day. And now FCS Midwest had a chance to claw their way back into this game before halftime as they would make it into NIU territory inside the 15 and into the end zone. As just like that it was back to a one possession game and we were going to have to punt again. FCS was knocking on the door of the end zone again as on third and seven they'd pick up the first down. So we needed this stop on third and goal as thankfully we would stop them short of the end zone. And they would have to settle for a field goal with two seconds left and we would only have a four point lead headed into the second half. Things needed to turn around quickly for us in the second half and we were not off to a great start on defense. Because on third and inches, FCS was already past midfield and they had a wide open touchdown as they were going to take the lead. It did not help us at all that we would come out and go three and out on our first possession. So we were in dire need of a defensive stop against FCS this possession now as it didn't look like it was going to happen. Second and one, they were already across midfield as they were driving into our territory and this play here could have been the dagger as we would get faked on the read option and it looked like it was a touchdown but we'd force a fumble as that would end up being a touchback after we recovered it in the end zone and it looked like that defensive stop had finally put some life into our offense as well too because we were moving the ball pretty efficiently here against the defense and picking up multiple first downs however we were backed up to a third and 11 and we would not be able to convert so we would send out the field goal unit and we would end up missing it right. Not a great way for us to end the third. This would be huge if we could pick up the third down stop to start the fourth quarter and we would do just that. And we needed to take advantage of this situation now to go ahead and take the lead over FCS Midwest as we were off to a good start. But this next play would set us back as despite this great play there would be a flag for offensive holding. And we would be backed up to a third and 18 but Ethan Hampton would find Grayson Barnes for the first down. As this drive would stay alive and it would be the freshman Kyle Kyle Thomas once again scoring the touchdown as we had taken the lead back over FCS Midwest by four points. We needed to stop now though more than anything and they were moving the ball quickly. But we had another chance here on third and seven and we would not be able to get the stop. The Coyotes were inside the five and would score the go ahead touchdown as we now had less than two minutes to score a field goal at a minimum. We were losing time off the clock quickly and Ethan Hampton would make a crucial mistake as he would throw throw an interception and that would all but seal the game here as the Coyotes would run the clock out as it would hit triple zeros for them and this is not how we wanted to start our first game as head coach. Despite Ethan Hampton throwing for over 230 yards and four touchdowns and Ontario Brown rushing for almost 150 yards this game, we're not going to win many matchups with the Huskies allowing over 400 passing yards in a game. Despite the loss though, Coach Burks was able to max out his passing game recruiting skills and headed into week three, we were the number one school for every single recruit on our recruiting board. This game to start our season wasn't easy, but things are surely not going to get any more easy as we prepare for number seven Notre Dame on the road next episode.